for the council, I'm Anna Dolosky. If you ask nutrition experts about vitamins, they'll tell you all we need is typically what's found in a routine diet. And if you ask vitamin industry reps, they'll tell you the exact opposite. Lucky for you, we have the docs on staff to tell you the truth. In 2011, researchers from the University of Minnesota found women who took multivitamins died at rates higher than those who didn't. Shortly after, another study found men who took vitamin E had an increased risk of prostate cancer. A hard knock on the industry since the vitamin craze had already been around for decades. And you can thank this man, Linus Pauling. He claimed that megadoses of vitamin C could prevent and cure any illness known to man. And not just one dose of vitamin C per day, we're talking as much as 18,000 milligrams per day. It's what Pauling recommended, and it's wrong. Although the studies failed to support his argument, Pauling believed vitamins and supplements had one property that made them cure-alls. And we still hear that word today, antioxidants, a term that looks great on paper and products all across the nation, but it's hardly effective in real life. Countless studies after Pauling's work have found vitamin C does very little to cure or prevent the common cold, let alone cancer or AIDS. In fact, it can be harmful when taken in extremely large quantities. Quantities. A study from the National Cancer Institute found that long-term smokers who were given vitamin E and beta-carotene were more likely to die from lung cancer or heart disease than those who didn't take any. So why then nearly half of all Americans take some sort of a vitamin each day? The simple answer is clever marketing. Earlier this year, the New York State Attorney General cracked down on the industry when it released a study that tested some herbal supplements found at GNC, Walgreens, Target, and Walmart did not contain the herbs on the label 80% of the time. Of course, the absence of an herb doesn't actually harm anyone, it's what's in the bottle that's concerning. Anabolic steroids, illegal stimulants, prescription drugs, all of these things are found in some supplement. So so it begs the question, why aren't they regulated just like prescription drugs? Thanks to the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, manufacturers can market products without first affirming their safety or meeting FDA requirements. Labels are cleverly crafted to contain phrases like promotes good health or supports the immune system, all of which are bogus claims to make you think what you're consuming is safe because it's natural. Of course, here at the council, we know better that natural is almost always anything but safe. To read more stories like this, like us on Facebook or visit our website, acsh.org. Don't forget, while you're there, you can also sign up for your daily dose of news delivered straight to your inbox. For the council, I'm Anna Dolosky.